Welcome back, guys. So if you have not watched the Mr. Bozeman video about how to run a chi-square analysis, stop this video, look at your assignment, and go and do that because you're going to have a practice problem or two and his video guiding you step by step on how to run chi-square analysis. He's just a lot more calm about statistics than I am. So I warned you guys that math was coming in biology AP and here it is. I'm going to be including with today's assignment, um, somewhere in our stream we're gonna have a list of equations or formulas that you're going to need for the AP exam. Be prepared to learn all of those over the course of the school year. Not trying to intimidate anybody, but it is what it is. Okay, so today we're working on chi-square analysis. It looks like chi, which is a Greek letter that looks like an X, um, but we call it chi-square. So if you recall from the Mr. Anderson video, I mean, it's called Bozeman Science, but his name's Mr. Anderson. Um, we use this to determine whether or not there was a significant difference in our data, okay? So if I want to say that something has an effect or doesn't have an effect, I need to mathematically be able to show at what point there is an effect. And we can also determine if there is enough deviation from expected values. So you saw in the, in the video that you watched about chi-square analysis that if you flip 50 coins, you're not necessarily going to get 25 and 25. There very possibly is going to be some variation, but that's expected. So what this is going to do is help you figure out if it's a far enough difference from what you're expecting to determine that there is a result of some kind of interference of some kind. So today we're going to do that with M&Ms. So if you bought your own M&Ms for this, um, that's great. You can go ahead and count your M&Ms on the step where I'm counting my M&Ms and you can use your values instead of the ones I'm going to get. If you're not able to get M&Ms or you forgot, um, feel free to use my numbers for this. That's fine. So anyway, um, the whole gist of what we're doing is we're going to be trying to see if the number of each color of M&M is significantly different from what is expected based on how the M&M company reports it. So this chart right here, if you can see it in the middle, this is the percent or per 100 of how many of each color they expect on average in their M&Ms. So I have plain ones over here. If you got some other different kind, they've got some other options. I personally didn't know that the color mix varied depending on the type of M&M. &M. I had no idea. But we have, I have plain today to show you. So on your lab sheet, it says, have you ever wondered why the package of M&Ms you bought never seems to have enough of your favorite color? Or why is it that you always seem to get the package of mostly brown M&Ms? What's going on at the Mars Company? Is the number of the different colors of M&Ms in a package really different from one package to the next? Or does the Mars Company do something to ensure that each package gets the correct number of each color of m and So this information in this chart is reported by Mars, which is the company that makes m and -Ms. So one way we could determine if the Mars Company is true to its word is to sample a package of m and and do something called a goodness of fit. So that is what we're doing with our chi-square analysis is we're seeing if the data fits with our expected values. Um, so this type of statistical test allows us to determine if any differences between our observed measurements and our expected, what Mars Company claims, are simply due to chance or some other reason. Example, the, the company's sorters aren't doing a very good job at putting the correct number of M&Ms in each package. The goodness of fit test we will be using is called the chi-square analysis. We will be calculating a statistical value and use a table to determine the probability that any difference between observed data and expected data is due to chance alone. So like we said with the coin flips, it's not necessarily going to be 25-25, even though that's what we expect on average. It could be different. So we start by stating a null hypothesis. You remember Mr. Anderson did that too. 
A null hypothesis, as we've been learning, is the prediction that something is not present, that a treatment will have no effect, or there is no difference between treatment and control. Another way of saying this is that is the hypothesis, whoa, another way of saying this is the hypothesis that an observed pattern and an expected pattern are effectively the same, differing only by chance, not because they are truly different. So for this first blank, you need to write a null hypothesis. And I'm not gonna tell you all the answers for these because I want you to do it. So go ahead right now, pause the video, write your null hypothesis. Remember that there is no effect or something did not happen. If you want examples of what the null hypothesis for these kind of problems are, I would go back to the Mr. Anderson video and see how he wrote his. Got your null hypothesis? Okay, good. So to test this hypothesis, we need to calculate the chi-square statistic, which is calculated in the following way. And so here's that gross formula you've been seeing. And so we know that this right here, we say chi-square is equal to the sum of observed minus expected squared divided by the expected value. So they're defining these here in case you didn't get those notes from the first video. Hopefully we did. Okay, so now we're going to get to the actual fun bit where we get to play with M&Ms. So I'm going to have to change my screen sharing so that you can see what's going on on the other side of my desk. Okay, so while you're getting all your stuff ready, let me get my stuff set up. So if you've got, if you've got your own M&Ms, go ahead and get those out, lay out a sheet of paper, and make sure you're getting ready to do this. There we go. So we're going to stop share here. Okay, guys, so I hope, <laughs> I hope you're ready for this. So let's screen share here. Okay, so I'm using a paper plate for this just because I've got a cat in here and I don't want M&Ms to go flying everywhere. So you got your M&Ms. I've got one of those movie theater boxes. It was like a dollar at the grocery store. That's what I could get a hold of. You may have a smaller bag, but that's okay. So what you need to do first is to sort these by color. So make sure that we are sorting them out by color. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause recording. I'm going to go ahead and get this set up and then I'll come back and I'll have numbers for you. Okay, I hope we've got our data. Um, I've got mine. So you may notice already that these numbers look a lot different than maybe what we were expecting. Like I only had five yellow M&Ms in that whole box, y'all, only five. Um, so the one thing that I did do, full disclosure, I had 102 M&Ms in those box. I took away one orange and one blue, which were the two biggest groups, just so we could have an even 100. It's gonna make our math so much easier on this assignment. Okay. so. Our numbers, so I'm going to pull up the document here. So observe, this is what, what we saw. So is it going to let me write in here? Yeah. Okay, so we had 11 brown M&Ms. We had, after I edited my numbers, guys, in real science, please don't do that. <laughs> I'm a bad example, y'all. So we had 30 orange. We had 12 green. We had nine red and five yellow. So that's a total of 100 M&Ms. So if we scroll back up for our expected values, okay? 
So that's going to be these numbers right here. So this is percent, which means per 100. So per 100 M&Ms, I'm expecting to have 13 brown, 14 yellow, 13 red, 16 green, 24 blue, and 20 orange. So we need to plug these numbers in down there. And I'm going to write them real quick so I don't have to keep scrolling back and forth. So 13, 14 yellow, 13 red, 16 green, orange is 20, and blue is 24. Okay, so let's go put that in our chart. Okay, so in our chart, brown, 13, blue, 24, orange, 20, green, 16, red, 13, yellow, 14. So this should add up to 100. Y'all double check me, but that should be 100 because this should be the distribution. Okay, so different. What's gonna happen is because you see in the formula that sum of sign, remember you're gonna be doing that formula a whole bunch of times and then you add the answers together. So just be prepared for that. So different, that means we want to subtract this one from this one. So 11 minus 13, is negative two okay then they want us to square the difference so what happens when we square a negative number remember that it turns positive right so squaring that is four okay and then we're going to divide by our expected so that one becomes what four over 13 So you're going to need to get this into decimal form. Um, since there's not the same probability for each one, we're gonna have to do that as a decimal. So you can use a calculator for this. That's what I'm going to do. Full disclosure, I'm gonna use a calculator. So we have four divided by 13. All right, I have 0 0.3076, so Let's do three decimal places that sound good, guys. I'm sure Miss Smith is going to have a fit if she ever saw this. So you're gonna go and do that for all of those, okay? So once you've done that for all of them, it says some of, you are totaling all of these and putting it here, all right? Once you've done all of that, that's your chi-square value. You found it, you did it. So now you must determine the probability that the difference between the observed and expected values occurred simply by chance. The procedure is to compare the calculated value of chi-squared to the appropriate value in the table below. First example, the table. Oh dear, what happened? Okay. Hold on guys, technical difficulties. Let's share with this. There you go, we're back. Okay, so we need to figure out our degrees of freedom, how you're going to use this critical value chart down here. So degree of freedom, it says, is the number of categories minus one. So how many categories did we have? We had one, two, three, four, five, six. So how many is that, six? minus one, that answer goes here, that they're degrees of freedom, okay? So we're looking over here. So if, it, if our total value is more than, see we have five degrees of freedom, so we're looking at this right here. So if that sum value is more than this, then we have to reject our null hypothesis. Something wonky happened at the Mars factory. 
if it's lower, then we accept the null hypothesis. No, it was just random circumstance. So you need to fill that out. And then you need to write in complete sentences down here. Do you accept or reject the null hypothesis and why? So I want you to cite the numbers that you just got. Um, and if you rejected your null hypothesis, so if you, there was something really wrong with our M&Ms, that may be the case when you do the math for ours. Um, why do you think that happened? That's a lot of speculation, so that's fine. I just wanna hear what you think. Okay, so I know at the bottom of this page, it talks about class results. At the making of this video, we have no class results. So do not worry about the bottom half of page three. I repeat, do not worry about the bottom of page three. We're not doing that, it's not counted against you, just because if I was doing this live, that would be different and I could ask y'all what your observed values were for those who are doing this with their own M&Ms. Um, we don't have that, so just skip it. Make sure that you are filling out this activity paper and that it's getting turned in along with your practice problems. Um, good luck, guys. Please, please, please let me know if this is still clear as mud and you need help. Um, happy hunting and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.